My name is James, this is Stefan. We're here to demonstrate a new proactive tool designed to accelerate the investigation of foodborne disease outbreaks. The tool works by combining two different types of data source, public health data sources and retail data derived from the sale of food. Working with the German Federal Institute for Risk Assessment and using real food sales data from Germany, we pre-calculate the spatiotemporal distribution describing the sale and consumption of over 600 products. Shown on the map of Germany in blue, Stefan is displaying examples of how different products are consumed differently across the country. On the left-hand side, you see a list of outbreaks a public health investigator might be monitoring. In this case, we're displaying a set of synthetic outbreaks used to test the performance of the system across a variety of food types. The idea is to pre-calculate the spatial distribution describing the sale of food before any outbreak ever even occurs. Once an outbreak does occur, we use complex new algorithms to compare geocoded public health case reports, the red points on the map, to the pre-calculated distributions described from the retail data, derived from the retail data. Cases of foodborne illness, those red points on the map, don't show up all at once. They are reported over a period of time as shown by this bell-shaped curve. In this case, we're displaying a synthetic outbreak of a harmful E. coli bacteria. In 2011, in Germany, a real E. coli outbreak led to, caused over 4,000 people to seek medical attention and led to over 50 fatalities. In that case, it took German health officials more than 60 days to identify the true cause of contamination, which later turned out to be sprouts grown from Im imported fenugreek seeds. By the time the 60-day investigation was completed, the outbreak was over. All of the bad seeds had been consumed. That's just one example. In the United States, 128,000 people are hospitalized and 3,000 people die each year from foodborne illness. Our goal is to accelerate this investigation process. By comparing the incoming case reports, those red points on the map, to the pre-calculated distributions derived from the sale of food, we, the system can calculate the probability that each food in turn might be responsible for the current outbreak. Worldwide foodborne illness causes $9 billion in medical loss and over $75 billion in e economic losses. In the center, you see a wheel chart which represents the subset of foods that the system predicts are most likely responsible for the current outbreak. In this case, you can see that by day 15, after only 13 reports, the system has already identified sprouts as the most likely cause. That's much faster than is typically possible today. This is in contrast to the 60 days and thousands of cases required in the German investigation. With this information, a public health official would already be able to obtain samples of all of these suspect foods and have them available for testing. As more cases come in, as more reports come in, the prediction of the system becomes even more accurate. The interventions view allows the investigator to see the set of foods that are currently suspect and also to visualize the tests the public health laboratories may have already um, conducted. While we think of foodborne disease as a public health problem, lost sales of suspect but otherwise good product makes, um, constitutes a major problem for farmers, producers, distributors, and retailers alike. In the 2011 E. coli outbreak, German farmers suffered 150 million euros in economic losses. The data required to accelerate the investigation and identify the contaminated product often exists already within the inventory control systems of retailers and distributors today. By pre-calculating these distributions and integrating that retail data with public health, an investigator can not only visualize the distribution of the suspect products, but selecting an area of the map, it, they can visualize specific public health case reports and lab, re lab reports from individual cases. We're working with our public health partners and with retailers to scale up this system with a view towards forming an industry-wide consortium focused on proactive supply chain safety and um, pre on an ongoing basis pre-calculating these distributions that can be helpful in, um, in shortening the, the, the required time for investigations. In conclusion, we've modeled thousands of outbreaks over the spatiotemporal data for 600 products in Germany, um, and we've been able to identify the contaminated product 
with better than 80% confidence in fewer than 20 clinical cases, in fewer than 20 case reports, often in as few as 10. That's much faster than is typically possible today. Food producers, retailers, distributors, and public health can collaborate, each using a system like this in different ways to shorten the time to intervention, thus saving thousands of lives and billions of dollars annually. <laughs>